He'll run 10, 12, 13 miles, 15 miles. He said, do you come in first? He said, no. I said, I quit doing that. He said, he's going to win. He said, well, I come in 13th or 14th or whatever, you know. And uh, But he knows what I'm saying. You know, we got to work with people. The Lord's working with us. You've got a wonderful pastor. I've enjoyed talking to him on several occasions. Even if he didn't need me anymore to preach, I'd, I'd still call him and check on him. I do that to the ministry. I appreciate the ministry. And uh, I call him whether you know I can come or not. I've called him from Alabama. I said, what's going on with that? And um, I told y'all he would be back preaching again. And he told me one night, he said, I believe God does it. I did heal it. He said, it. He said it. <clears throat> and I told you that would happen. I said, he'll be back and he'll be full strength again. Yes. You know what that says? If you just keep going, whether it looks like it's possible or not, God's going to do something for you. Yes, he will. Keith and Sister, uh, what's that lady's name sitting beside you? Michelle. Michelle, yeah, I know. God has got good things for y'all. Y'all are here. I think y'all are some of the first ones here. And these two right here. And, uh, some of you come in after the church has been going for a while. I don't know why you do that. <laughs> I'm about to leave tonight. I'm, I'm going to the beach. But um, I always felt like that if you did that on a job, they fired you. We got a notice from one doctor. Matthew went in, been a year ago, so he went in to see a doctor and he said, if you... Three times don't show up for an appointment. Some of them too. They said, we will never talk to you again. We do not tolerate that. Should we do it to God? I don't think so. I don't think we should be so arrogant and proud and so important. They ain't none of us that can't be replaced. God can replace them. Boy, I tell you all this. But anyway, I feel like the Lord said, I'm calling you to a better walk. Right. Amen. I'm doing things for you you cannot see. Right. But you will be so glad because you submitted to the correction, to the instruction, and did what was right in God's eyes. You know, it's not easy to get come under authority. Some people will never come under authority. I know a man... He claims he's been, if he'd have sought it like he claimed he did, he'd have had the Holy Ghost. He's been claiming uh, that he, he'd like to have it, but 14 years ago. There's nothing in the Bible about stuff like that. You can have it tonight if you want, and he's been going on for 14 years. But I know what his problem is, but, you know, it's stubbornness and stiffness. He is all the time getting in trouble with his family because he wants to tell them what he thinks. And I said, you can't do that. But he does it anyhow. He's got a mother that's a oneness. And when she comes down to this area, she won't come to our church. But when he goes to pick her up, he goes to a church with her, that oneness church. I said, uh-uh. I said, they're as false a doctrine as there ever was. They're close but missing a mouse. When you deny the Father... You're denying the Son. you got to take all three of them. Yep. They mock us and say, them Trinity people can't count. One. I said, no, I think it's the other way around. But we're facing some things out there. There's a lot of things. It's close. It's close, but not quite. The Amish, a lot of people go on about them. Listen. Listen, I'd be careful... There was an Amish restaurant. They said, you didn't eat there, did you? I said, well, yeah. I thought Amish, you know, they just really... And they, uh, I said, well, the lady that runs the place turned up. There was a meeting upstairs. And it's a fine and beautiful looking old place. They had all built it. And she dropped their pie on the bare concrete floor where everybody's walking. And she slid a cookie sheet under it, flipped it back over, put more topping on it, took it up and let them eat it. They said she's dropped pieces of chicken off the platters as she carries them out, picks them up puts them back on and delivers them to the table. And all those feet in there walk in. She said, I work there. I know how they are. They're rough. And I said, you can try and be holiness and try and be separate from the world. But if you don't have Christ, you're wasting your time. And Christ is not in that stuff. I mean, he's not in that stuff. Somebody brought me a gallon of milk one time. 
They've got it down at the Amish place, and they said it's got the cream and everything. It is wonderful. And I kept seeing, and I held it up, and the whole bottom of that jug was black. I just said, well, thank you, but I never drank it. <laughs> so what that is. But you know, you know, we get we, we look at things and, and, and make judgments, but they need to be saved, just like everybody else needs to be saved in Christ. There's so many religions out there. Our president said in a little video clip I saw, he said, My Muslim faith. He said, I am a Muslim. I believe in Allah. How did we get him in office? He lied. He lied. He lied. He lied. He lied. And so our nation is becoming Muslim. Silently, thousands, millions have come into this nation. And you don't hear much. He said very quietly. But in Revelation, it spoke of the horses that would be coming out in the center of this world. When the red horse, I believe it's the red horse that comes out. He said there will be killing as like never before. We have all these movements wanting to be superior. And somebody's got to lose. Somebody's going to lose. But it's not that far away. Not that far away. Things are happening that have never happened before. In Elijah's day and time, they made up their mind. Elijah did what God said do. God blessed that man. He walked. He had never laid a hand on him. And when he met Obadiah one day, one of God's prophets, and uh, he said, tell Ahab, your master, I want to talk to you. Well, God didn't have to go through Obadiah. He could have just let Elisha run right into Ahab. But Obadiah said, oh, oh, oh listen, listen, I've hid the prophets of God and fed them bread and water because Jezebel would have killed every one of them. She was killing the Christians in the land. He said, just as sure as I tell Ahab, the Spirit will carry you away from here somewhere. He had such, I mean, he just believed in Elijah. Elijah said, as sure as the Lord thy God may with, I will be here. And he was. And Ahab told him, he said, Art thou that troubleth Israel? He said, No, you are. And God's going to show you what he's going to do. They never could lay a hand on him. Never could end his life. They wanted to. And Obadiah said, My master, there's nowhere he hasn't sought for you. God just always kept him a little bit around the book Cherith. And the ravens. What did those ravens carry? He was feeding God's prophet. And he declared rain would come, and it come in droves, thunder clouds, lightning bolts. And Elijah outrun Ahab to the city. We never know when something special God's going to use us in. I'm always excited about going somewhere new, preaching, because I never know what the Lord's going to do, who's going to be healed. And I may have told you, I ended up in North Carolina. Pastor was healed of a cancer. But he said, Well, Brother David, if you got the itch to preach, you called me several times. I said, No, God does. I said, He told me to call you. He said, You better get on over here. And it was because he had another cancer. And I didn't know it. But when I went in there to that service that night, they were waiting for a Craig Edmund to come and hold revival starting the next week. And we broke out that night. A young man came up to me and he said, I got the Holy Ghost, but the devil's fighting me over. I said, don't let him. And I shoved him. And he went over the floor, rolled, screamed, jumped up in there, looked like a cannonball flying through I mean, that young man hooted and hollered. And I said, we've never seen Wes like that. His sister, I called her. I said, uh, Wesley's sister, I said, would you come up here? And I throw my handkerchief down. I said, you've been fighting too long. I said, would you put your foot on the enemy? She said, I'd be glad to. She had been quiet, never received the Holy Ghost. Come out and raise her and blow this all away. Like that, went to screaming and shouting all over the place. They said, she ain't done like that for Big old pastor, and he's great, big, tall. Kind of reminds me of O.D. O.D.'s bigger than him. He's skinny. This, this pastor, and he's got hair on his head, too. He had a, I said, how did you get that black hair on your head? His wife said, he's got a little gray coming in there now, but he's near 80 years old. And he said, I had a biopsy done and it's cancer. Right there. He said, I want you to pray for me. I said, I don't need to. I remember it now, I told you. He, I said, I don't need to. He took off running, got healed that night with that cancer. You never know what God's fixing to do. Sister Carrie, don't ever doubt God. Make being in attendance in this house the most important thing in your life. 
That's the only way you're going to win the kingdom. That's the only way the rest of them will come. When they see your consecration and your dedication to God so powerful, they'll say, something's holy over there. Family went by the street of the old guy who's a record right name is rough, and he saw his family dressed up nice over there going by before cell phones and all that. And he, he was so impressed. They'd wave at him and talk to him and go down. And he'd come out one day and said, where are y'all going? You come by here every Sunday. He said, we're going to church. It's wonderful. Jesus Christ lives forever. He's God's son and he loves us and saved us everyone. He said, is there room for another one? He said, can I change? And he went and changed and they waited for him and he'd come out one to church and got saved. Because they come by every Sunday. On time, dedicated, and that impressed him. 